What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Swanky Disc Golf Show. I am your host, Luke. I am joined this week by Reed and Josiah. Reed is finally making his Swanky Disc Golf Show YouTube debut. What, what? <laughs> He's been off the show for a while. He's been on sabbatical, and he is back. Um, welcome back, Reed. Thank you, thank you. We got a few hot topics to talk about today. We're going to talk the All-Star Weekend. We're going to talk the Disc Golf Network. We're going to talk you disc a little bit because everything is just blowing up in the disc golf world, and uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. Thank you all for joining us if you're listening online, and also if you're watching us on YouTube, huge shout-out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And when the season starts, we're going to be posting weekly podcasts. It's going to be a ton of fun. How are you guys doing? It's been a while. How are you doing, Reed? I'm doing pretty good. Yes, good to be back on the network <laughs> with you boys. Um, yeah, mm. uh, not a lot of disc golf has been played as of late. Been super busy. That's no good. Um, but got to get back out there on the course. Hopefully this week and get some, get some playing time in. And uh, yeah, just been hanging out with the kids and getting some fam time in. Nice, nice. Josiah, how you doing? Well, I don't have kids, so I play disc golf. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I played a tournament this weekend in the snow. It was like a foot of snow on the ground, so that was fun. Uh, TD was awesome, though. They went and cleared like all the tee pads and salted it and stuff, so it was relatively easy to go off the tee pads um, if you wore shoes with some traction. Um, and if you were like being, you wore shoes with no traction that it didn't help whatsoever. Um, mm. but it was fun. I actually had my best round that I've had on that course. Um, nice. it's an easy course and I should be able to score better, but I've only played this course in tournaments. So I've never actually played a casual round, um, like all the way through to practice or anything like that. So I wasn't mad. It was fun. Got to play some disc golf. Um, yeah, good time. That's awesome. I have not been playing a ton lately, but I have been putting. I've been putting every day, <laughs> and it awesome. sucks. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh, <laughs> it's going pretty well. I think I'm going to spend another month on 20-footers, though. My goal was to do, like, 15-footers, 20-footers, 25-footers, and then start messing around with, like, straddle putting, knee putting, change it to a target basket. But we're going to spend another month on 20-footers. We're just going to sit there for a while because 20-footers and 15-footers are very different, it turns out. <laughs> Much yep. more difficult. Um, but, yeah, let's uh, let's jump into some of the stuff going on. This weekend, for those of you who don't know, is the Disc Golf Pro Tour All-Star Weekend. Uh, it's a ton of fun. We're going to talk about the format a little bit and how we feel about it. Uh, but something fun that they did was the drafting of players recently. You have Team Isaac Robinson versus Team Calvin Heimberg, which is, I think, awesome because of all the debates we had over who the player of the year was. Um, and so Isaac Robinson picked his friends <laughs> pretty much <laughs> is what went down. I don't even have the list in front of me, but I already I know it's Ezra Robinson, Kyle Klein, uh, Gannon Burr, yep. right? Yep. And then Cole freaking, Redolin. who's the other young guy? Yep. Redolin <laughs> and Gossage, Gossage, I think. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. I don't know how so, yeah, old Gossage team. is, but is he the oldest person on the team? They're all like if he is, I think 22. he's like twenty one yeah, or twenty two. They're, they're all so <laughs> yeah. young. You got the young bucks versus the savvy vets in um, Calvin Heimberg, Matteo, Chris Dickerson, Rick, Ricky Wysocki, Anthony Barella is a young guy, but also a, a pretty Gossage savage, is twenty five. Sav savvy vet. Gossage is twenty five. He is ancient so compared of... to the rest of his team. <laughs> <laughs> he literally yeah. is. Uh, it'll be fun watching Isaac and Ezra play together in the doubles. Um, so there's like a doubles format, a singles format, and then there's also some. Uh, oh, what are they? What is their definition of it? Like skills challenge. That's what I'm trying to say. They also have a skills challenge, which, from my understanding, is open. It, they invited even more players than just the all stars to play mm -hmm. in the skills challenge. How do you guys feel about? This sort of layout that they're working with, are there any improvements we could make? Are you hyped for the All-Star Weekend, or is it kind of falling short of your expectations? What do you think, Josiah? Um, I am just finding out a lot of this information, so I've got a lot of <laughs> thoughts going through my mind. But yeah. I, I like the fact that they're making the All-Star event purely a 
doubles and then singles that like hey you've got two teams yeah. that are playing each other we're doing doubles and then singles best score wins stroke play i kind of like that it's just kind of an even playing field not even playing field but like more or less like they're not factoring oh i had a bad day of putting when i did yeah. the putting challenge um even though like i'm a phenomenal putter type of deal um but at the same time they're still allowing that to be kind of an individual so those who are good at you know distance or putting or accuracy can kind of showcase their strengths as an individual and not if you know if they mess up it's like oh i messed up i had a bad day um and it's not hurting their team so at, at least as right now i i like the way it's going i like that it's different it actually makes me want to watch both events whereas last year i was just like oh let me just go watch the singles and i'll look up the rest of the uh the scores and stuff yeah so. but it's it's making me want to watch the skills challenge as its own event because it's an individual based event as opposed to affecting the team yeah i forgot to mention the fpo teams you have team missy gannon and team own scoggins notably missing we have chris and tatar not back from europe yet uh but on missy's team we have missy holland hanley ella hansen ali smith katrina allen sarah hokum and Owen Scoggins has Haley King, Jessica Weiss, Henna Blomroos, Cap Merch, and Macy Valadez. So that'll be pretty fun to watch as well. Should be pretty competitive. Um, I think I saw a quote where Missy Gannon said we have, like, the boring, really consistent, safe team <laughs> that's going to play super well. So I don't know. <laughs> kind of we'll, we'll see how that goes. What do you think, Reed? Yeah, I think I like it the way that it's broken down into, like Josiah said, that it's kind of separate. There's, like, a... The doubles and singles is the all-star event, the like the main event. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like how the NBA does it, where it's separate events. But it's even better than the NBA in that, like, they really invited, you know, separate people that that weren't going to be invited anyway to come do this. Um, I just visibly cringe, just so you know. <laughs> When you said it's better than the NBA's also we can it's a little uh, I think that the, a little bit of a reach I, there. It's not it's not better than the NBA's like it's gonna have more viewership or that it's a better product, but it's like they I think they learned quickly. The NBA invites a they, ton of people out that aren't all stars, I believe. Like for the dunk contest, for the three point shooter, for the skills challenge. That's true, they do. I forgot about the dunk contest. They even contest. have a create they as of this year have a creators cup involved in the NBA All Star Weekend and they have the celebrity game and yeah, sorry. It's okay. I, I get what you're I like saying. the celebrity just... game. No, <laughs> I just mean that yeah. I was thinking about the three-point contest and the skills challenge in particular. Those are normally yeah. all-stars, guys that are already there. Okay, gotcha. Those two in particular. I forgot that the dunk contest, you're right, they do normally bring other people out for that. <laughs> but still, it's like even the dunk contest, they don't bring out people. They don't bring out the best dunkers in the world for that. You know what I mean? Like they bring out the best yeah. NBA players well, that are dunkers. not anymore. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I like it. I like that I personally am going to be focused primarily on doubles and singles and that I like that, you know, these guys get to focus on just stroke play and that it's sort of a more pure, pure disc golf event now that we're not like trying to score these skill challenges as part of a larger total. It's just a little bit weird. It was last year. Yeah. So I, I like it this way, and I'm really excited to see uh, the blue team dominate. <laughs> Wait, which one is blue? Isaac? Isaac, yeah. <laughs> the Robinsons, nice. yeah. Gannon, Cole, and Aaron, and Kyle, dude, they're stacked. Yeah. I like the format. My thing, and I, I'm not a big fan of golf, I guess, or like similar sports. I don't know how you do... My my thing about it, why I'm not very excited for the All-Star Weekend, I'll say this, is that we see these same exact people compete against each other every single week. Like, the reason that the All-Star game for, like, the Pro Bowl or, like, the NBA is super exciting because it's all the best players in one place, and it's awesome. I mean, we don't always get to see them play doubles together. That's cool. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know if that's maybe just an issue for a golf or tennis and stuff like that in general. But I'm not super excited because I'm like, I see these people play on the card together every single week. I don't know if that just means there needs to be more disc golfers out there, more professional disc golfers, so that we see like different lineups each week. Um, like 
on, playing on different cards. But I see, I like just looking at the names. I see Dickerson, Wysocki, Ezra, Isaac, Calvin playing on lead card and chase card every week. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. I don't know if there's a solution to that. That's just my gut reaction. It's like, what I was even thinking of. Why am I not more excited for this All Star Weekend? Because it is cool, but it's not like I get really excited for like the Pro Bowl or uh, the MLB All-Stars and the NBA All-Stars, and it's like you never really see every single one of the best players come together like that. But we do in disc golf. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like the FPO field especially is just the normal, like this is a tournament FPO field. <laughs> this yeah. is what it is minus Kristen Tatar. Um, that's, not, that's not entirely true, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know what they could do to spice it up more. I mentioned the NBA has a Creators Cup now where they have all of the biggest YouTube creators come out and do, yeah. like, a basketball game. That's so I imagine the NBA will get more creative with it, but it was a ton of fun to watch because yeah. everybody's just goofing around. Uh, that's a really good idea, and I know Foundation did the One Creators Cup. I don't know if maybe that's something that could be pitched to the pro tourists. Like, All right, hear me creators out. Creators Cup. <laughs> hear me out. You get a whole yeah. bunch of disc golfers, the all-star disc golfers, and they form their teams, and then you say, all right, we're playing Ultimate. <laughs> with and, a glitch and, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah you just you just make them play like something i would watch that I, w- I would that would be fun i think the skills beat. challenge will be fun i just i don't know i feel like there's there's got to be some other way to liven up the all-star weekend i don't know what you do honestly it's disc golf somebody would have to have some major brainstorming sessions to make it super exciting like these other ones um like that professional sports have definitely celebrities which i think they do they have some they usually have like a celebrity match did they already do that this year so they usually do like a celebrity like like charity doubles event but it's in the middle of the year so like it was recorded separately and it was posted to jomez separately yeah i think that would be good to incorporate and if if you want to do what other sports do where they make the all-star weekend a serious serious event but most other sport well i don't know about most when does the nfl do it? i know the nba takes the middle of the season Mm -hmm. and like gives everybody a week off basically for the all-star break well the Um, nfl just does it in between the conference championships and the super bowl so it Interesting. happened last week. And the best players so I guess are everybody there does it different. because if you're playing in the Super Bowl, you don't play in the Pro Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Even, if, even if you're selected. So. Yeah. Yeah, everybody does it differently, I guess, but there's definitely some ways they could liven it up. Yeah, I don't I know. I, all I know is like the Pro Bowl for football is they'll do like dodgeball games and stuff like that. And yes, saying, which they, the NFL has been working on that. Right. And I, think I think the NFL has had the worst pro, like all-star weekend forever, and they're they're trying. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying I find things like that highly entertaining. Like, yes, uh, last, 100%. So I actually watched some of the Pro Bowl last week, and they did like a relay race style of thing where it was like each team had guys that did different things, and one of them was like a tire flip, and then that nice. whole yeah, workout see, cool. where they have to like – run into those poles that have the weights stacked on like a platform and push it like to the end. Like there was one of those, there was like a cart that had people sitting on it that they had to push. I think that'd be cool. And and and, the the PDJ could invite more players out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like it was an event. And if you're watching, it's entertaining to watch people goof around in not a necessarily serious way. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So, and they're all personalities that we know and would enjoy watching. Right. Like, the people that are tuning into this event are not, like, casual viewers. Like, if you're watching this, you're a big fan of all these people. You've been watching them for years, yeah. probably. And we'd really enjoy watching them play, like, even, like, the uh, collegiate stuff. Like, when they pl- they play Guts or, like, whatever that game is where it's, like, dodgeball with Frisbees. Like, just something like that would be yeah. – I, I completely agree. I hadn't thought about that, Josiah. But, yeah, these side events, like, get these guys doing something weird with Frisbees. Like, let's <laughs> let's get dogs out there and see who can That's have the, lar- the longest <laughs> – catch 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 yeah. we're getting like race in dogs out position. there i mean we got some games i think we could we could play <laughs> put our heads together here come on 100 percent. yeah they're in a unique position with a flying disc sport where you can do a lot you can do a lot of weird things it's gonna be really fun to watch um so yeah those are those are my overall initial thoughts of it i'm excited to watch i will watch um and who are who are we all picking to win 
Isaac's team, of course. <laughs> and then uh, who do we think, Own or Missy's team? I think Own's team's going to win. Yeah. I like that take. I don't know, yeah. dude. This is... I think it could go either way, but I think... Oak we always say, nice. if Kristen Tatar is not in the house, it is anyone's game in the FPO division. <laughs> Paige so isn't here either. That is she just not an all-star? Paige is isn't she hurt? there. Is she still hurt? Well, she didn't play, like, at all last I know, year. but is she, <laughs> yeah. is she so still hurt? I, I, she just signed I just a two-year extension with this craft. Yeah, I just don't think she was high enough in the rankings, honestly. Was she? I don't think she's hurt any... Well, I mean... She's still recovering, I assume, but I think she's planning to play this year, for sure. Because we've already picked her, and that she's she's playing the Chess dot com Invitational. It's kind of crazy that Josiah in an event her as an like underdog. this, <laughs> I did, I did. It's kind of crazy that in an event like this, that the DGPT doesn't reserve the right to just like have one slot that they uh, fill bring themselves. the best two players. Yeah, just in. like yeah. I mean, <laughs> for injury's sake, like really, that's a little weird. Yeah, but everybody wants to see Paige. Yeah. Page yeah, should Paige be wasn't here. one of the top twelve players in standings. That's why she's like I got names on this list. I guess I so. don't know. There's at least one name I don't even know her. Allie who Smith. I'm sorry, I don't know who that is. And I've been doing Didn't pickums all year? year. That's that's did she win rookie of the that's year? That's totally said? possible, yeah. and I don't know who she is. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure she just won rookie of the year. I well, Allie, I'm not familiar with your game. Definitely have heard the I name, apologize. but I could not put the face to the name, yeah. Um, but we don't have well, Paige, and we got Allie we'll Smith out here. I think it's going to be fun to watch either way. Uh, how we watch is going to be the interesting thing. We're going to talk about the Disc Golf Network. For those of you who don't know, if you are a Disc Golf Network subscri subscriber, there's some new plants. There's new payment methods for the Disc Golf Network. Uh, they have their basic package which we're gonna get some reactions from josiah and reed on this see how we feel uh just i haven't actually read all of these i'm gonna just give you the highlights of the different <laughs> options i know from a business span standpoint that i don't think there's price increases here i could be wrong but anytime there is a price increase and not a dramatic increase in quality of the product i'm out i'm out of there uh so hopefully that doesn't happen but i'm gonna read this um the basic coverage you get live tournament coverage, uh, first round of all Disc Golf Pro Tour events, and select PGGA members or majors. Full coverage of Chess.com Invitational, USWGC, Champions Cup, Worlds. So you get the majors. But this says first round of all Disc Golf Pro Tour events. Do you only get the first round with that? Ad free. Yeah. Ad free. Wait no. Interesting. That's just what that's just what you. <laughs> no, that's watch. Not, it. Doesn't say that. That's just what it says. It says DGN Basic, first round of Disc Golf Pro Tour events and select PDGA Pro Majors. Oh, that's all that's it says. Weird. Yeah. One device. I think. This, I mean, this is a. I mean, I don't know if we're gonna get into reactions here yet, but I think the <laughs> Basic is an improved, free product. This is better yes. than what was free before. Which was just the Here's first the issue round. is that it's not free. It's five well, ninety nine a month. It's completely not <laughs> it's worth five ninety nine a month. Like I can't stress enough <laughs> how not worth five ninety nine a month this is. It is free if you have a disc golf and if you have a PDGA membership. Those are the only free. people that will have it. No one is paying five ninety nine a yep. month for this. Not a soul on the planet. No. Not a not a shot. Especially if Joe Mez coverage is still going on YouTube, there is no chance. The reason you that only there get is one device. The reason there's a base price for this is so that PDGA members feel like they're getting something here. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It is an improved. I think they product, continue though. to get five dollars off all the other ones. So um, what I'm yeah. seeing here is that last year or two years ago, you could watch the last round of events for free on YouTube. Yes. Uh, this past year, you could watch the first round of events for free on YouTube, and it looks like this year you can't watch. The first round of events? That's the other question I was thinking is, are they going to still put it on YouTube and the I don't Disc think so. Because <laughs> if so, that is so dumb. There's oh. no so, so from what I'm seeing is it says select, uh, you can continue right. free access to select live content throughout the season. Uh, Network will continue to air the first round and select PDGA majors for free on the YouTube channel. So yeah, 
you can still watch the free like for free on the YouTube channel. So what's the point? R.I.P. YouTube. There chat. is no point. Like, why would you ever pay five ninety nine to watch the first round for free when you can already watch the first round for free on YouTube? Yeah. So there got to be. Taking I have away to the imagine YouTube. there is a. Yeah. I can't, dude. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of ways to justify it because I have to know that a panel of somewhat savvy businessmen sat around and decided these prices, but I don't know. Okay, but we'll like, move on I, from that. But like, even <laughs> me looking at it, the DGM yeah. basic plan, it, even if I'm a PDGA member and I'm getting it for free, I'm getting the same thing on the YouTube channel. Yeah, on YouTube. Except why I would I, wa- why why would I watch it on a way on worse channel, platform? Which is way more entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Wait, I have more. To I say don't about think this they're thing. gonna. <sighs> okay, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. go ahead. I was gonna move on to the standard price. Oh, oh yeah, we can do that. We Let me just that. read the standard I, yeah, price yeah, yeah. and the pro price, and then you can. I thought you were continue. moving on. I was like, standard I have so price twelve ninety nine every month. Live coverage of all pro tour and major events except the European Open, USDGC. Gosh darn it, Innova, and Throw Pink <laughs> Women's Disc Golf Championship. You then get access to VODs and all free Jomez next day post-produced. Who ca- it's going to be on YouTube. Okay. So you get Jomez Pro content on the Disc Golf Network. That's cool. Two devices. Two playback sessions at a time. Pro, $20 a month. Live coverage of everything, including USD. Incl- okay. We'll talk about that. Additional premium live content, future feature whole broadcast, alternate commentary broadcast, pregame plus halftime plus postgame tournament central bo- broadcasts, and more. Nine bonus hour long tournament central shows. Ad free Jomez Pro next day post produced tournament coverage. Uh, three registered devices. First round ad free at all events. Three playback sessions. There's so much. And those are your options. So much to break down here. Wow. There's so much to break. There was way more to break down here than I thought. I read through these, but reading through them again, my first observation is that I'm paying an extra seven dollars a month so that I can watch USDGC and throw pink in European Open. That is whack. <laughs> seven dollars a month for potentially a whole year. I mean, there's some other things, but that's what they're charging me to watch USDGC, throw pink, and the European Open. Am I crazy or is that crazy? <laughs> no. So the difference, you're not. First of all, you're not crazy. But the big difference is that if you're a PDGA member, there's a huge discount. I thought and it was only five dollars. No, it's, yeah, it's, it's eight dollars. dollars. It's twelve ninety nine. Oh, it's seven dollars. Okay. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're like what I like. What we pay right now is twelve ninety nine. Well, actually, we're paying fifty percent off because we have the PDGA member discount. But. <laughs> Like that's basically the difference is that. So right now with a PDGA membership, you get fifty percent off of twelve ninety nine. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, correct. (laughs) So it'll be the same. They're going to change it. Standard, will be the same. No, the pro version will be twelve ninety nine a month for for PDGA PDGA members. members. Yeah. Yeah, and we're on what. Wait, we're on. <laughs> was we're there on, a standard and pro version before? No, <laughs> no but standard, standard is the closest thing go. to what we have. I think Exists. like you're yeah. saying that we yep. don't get uh, European Open and USDGC, but we didn't get USDGC included with this, did we? Did was USDGC included last year? I can't even remember. Yeah. Oh, it we, was. So they're taking this away. There, so I don't remember. Um, it was. It was on, available on Disc Golf Network. We had so to for pay standard, for that if you are for years. So. I'm just used to that. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So I guess that's maybe getting better, but it's still regardless if you're a PDGA member or not, it's going to be seven dollars extra to get those three events per month. Correct. Uh, or just in like, the months where those all events these are. Other things. Yeah, that's true. Just pay for it for that one <laughs> I mean, month. Seven dollars. There you go. Yeah. Which is exactly <laughs> still, what we're going to do. Like when I look at that, the thing that stands out to me the most is being able to watch those. Like USDGC is one of the biggest tournaments in the world throw pink european open biggest tournaments in the world aside from worlds and it's like i'm paying seven dollars extra a month for that yeah i don't know obviously no, no, you no. Just do so, it for the one month so here's the thing i think you're paying seven dollars a month for these extra things that they're giving you like uh extra content yeah. you get ad free live coverage in the first round you get two free tickets to a pro tour event you get this exclusive that didn't show letter. up on here yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get two free tickets, an exclusive newsletter, 10% that, off Pro Tour tickets, yeah. 
20% off the Pro Tour shop, like, and then some bonus tickets. That's and cool. actually, the biggest thing that I've noticed is you can watch it on three devices. I was going to say that, too. You can yes. share with a third that friend if you're actually splitting is it. a game changer. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, that is super nice. It makes what it I was saying is when I look at it, that stands out to me as like, I'm not going to lie. I don't really care for the nine bonus hour long tournament central shows oh, and yeah, the extra no, content. For sure. I want to watch USDGC. <laughs> that would be like the only reason that I upgrade. If yeah. I'm my personal self buying it, I'm like, the only reason I want to upgrade is so I can watch USDGC. And but the, I guess but the biggest paying difference $7 is, the one time isn't bad. But the biggest difference is instead of you know me paying 650 and you watching it and then reed paying 650 to also watch it now we're just paying 13 dollars for all three of us to watch it so in yes. reality it does come out to be the same price for that point not including any of all those bonus things so i think if you're a pdga member the dgm pro is definitely super worth it 12.99 yes. a month if you are not pretty much nothing's worth it <laughs> no just kidding i it's hard to say how worth it it is. What do you think, Reed? I mean, if this were unpack some of your if, thoughts. If this for were us. me, <laughs> you know, like, and I can, like, I'll be honest with you guys. I I do not carry DGN over the off season. I canceled that bad boy in October and have not been paying that because <laughs> they have absolutely nothing on the program. I am not paying for. I don't care if it's a dollar ninety nine. I'm not paying it over the off season. I don't care about the bonus streams. I don't care about any content that's not professional tournament coverage. And so, it, and Jomez, actually. I like some of the stuff that Jomez does. I will be honest about that. Um, but like Josiah is saying, on YouTube. exactly. I think the three devices makes this worth it for a certain subset of people to carry year round, uh, or not year round, but all season long. If you are sharing with friends, concurrent streaming on three devices you get 12.99 between three people you're all paying like four bucks ish i mean like that's worth it if you all have pdga memberships <laughs> no only one of you needs to have it one of you well, needs to be true. a pdga that's member true. you split it with three it. people and you can you know rock and roll that way and I know what I was thinking. uh and current yep. i mean see they're probably planning on that happening for a lot of people it's why they have concurrent streaming um it's not like you know they know what's going on yeah. Um, and, and so that's worth it. Like, I think for people, if you're splitting it, if you're not splitting it, you should by no means have pro unless we're in a European open or a USDGC month. You can pay for pro for two months of the year and get all the events. So basically you pay an extra what 14. What about people who no buy the yearly plan? Oh, we need to talk about the yearly plan. Look <laughs> at the prices, guys. Look at what the base price for a yearly <laughs> pro plan is. Two hundred and forty. Sixty. It's two thirty nine ninety nine. No, for pro. Let's. Oh, for pro. For two thirty nine ninety nine. So you're actually spending more money on a year. If I'm doing my math. Correctly. You are spending more money for the year than per month. <laughs> what in the world? That makes no is sense. That right? Yes, because yeah, it's like wait, it's wait, like wait. ten cents. It'd be like ten. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's actually like one. It's, 10 cents. it's eleven cents, right? It's it's yeah, yeah. one it's 11, eleven cents cents more. It's eleven cents more to buy the year. <laughs> yep. Even if you're a PDGA member, it's it's more. No, if you're if you're a PDGA member, it's oh no no, it's you're, like right, you're, right, you're right, you're right, four dollars cheaper. But it's it's only like four dollars cheaper if I'm doing my math right. I mean, and they do have yeah, down yeah. here at the bottom benefits that are only for the yearly subscription. And for Pro, that it does include these two tickets. Two free general admission tickets to oh, a DGPT event. I didn't realize those were just for the yearly. And that is only for the yearly subscription. All right. So that's how they're, they're justifying this. But it's pretty crazy that there's... I mean, they just toss that in there. I guess if you break it down... so. Yeah, it's pretty standard for these streaming services to give you, like, two months free on the yearly plan. So that's, like, $40 for two free general admission tickets. That's essentially what they're charging you. I'm not sure if that's a good deal or not, honestly. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's why I guess there's no discount for the year. They're, they're throwing you those tickets. Yeah, which, depend like... Depending on the day, it's a first round ticket. Usually, the first round's pretty cheap, <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it's saving a little bit of money. My overall thoughts: basic without a PDGA membership, 
doesn't even need to exist. Completely useless. Yep. <laughs> Agree. Uh, pro for a group of friends, and one of them has a PDGA membership, super worth it. Actually great. Really good premium there. I think it's good. Whole thing, uh, overall, way too <laughs> way too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I'm, I'm reading the comments on their Instagram posts of the new Disc Golf Network things, and there's so many people that are just like, can someone explain? I'm super confused. Yeah. Can someone explain? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is a little bit there's a little bit too much going on right now. Um, and people are doing the math, and there are a few people saying like the year long one doesn't make any sense, probably because it doesn't say anything about the tickets on the actual picture here. Um, and the tickets are even like, do if you're on the West Coast, the tickets don't mean squat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you true. Can't go anywhere on the West Coast. <laughs> so it's like the tickets on uh, the pro tour is so small that those tickets only mean something to like a, if you're near a pro tour event which is how many like it's it's if you're on the east coast or if you're in texas uh yeah i don't know that's ultimately kind of the problem with the yearly plan is that really disc golf people can get away with paying for nine months of content and get every major event every, That's every event also true and that, they don't need 12 months if you're gonna yeah if you're gonna con me into paying for a year <laughs> i need year-round content <laughs> that's right <laughs> so that's right. sorry um yeah overall our professional recommendation based on everything <laughs> you just heard is yeah if you have a pdga membership just full send the 12.99 a month for the pro if you do not have a pdga membership just watch on youtube and, like, you will not need any more disc golf content. I'm just being honest. Find like, a friend who has the PDGA or, Pro? Yeah. That, too. Find a friend. Cause, cause do not buy one this. one out of three. Unless you're getting the Pro. Number. Yep. <laughs> That's going to be our recommendation, unless, any, if, unless you guys have any quarrels with that. <laughs> yeah. Find a friend and pay for Pro together. $4 a person. Send it. That's my recommendation. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, just watch Jomez post day coverage, because uh, following along live is ideal. But with, it, I don't know. We'll see if they step up the production quality. They have been year over year. I'm not gonna rip the Disc Golf Network. They do. They do a good job of improving each year. Um, but as of right now, I would say just stick to YouTube. Uh, fo- speaking of following along live, our closing subject matter is U Disc. Hot topic, U Disc Live gone, out of here. <laughs> it is uh, now no longer associated with the Disc Golf Pro Tour. They decided to bring things in house, um, and I'm going to ask Josiah and Reed if this is a W or an L for Disc Golf in general. Um, some introductory thoughts here. Uh, we noticed that the All Star Weekend, of course, is this weekend. On a normal Pro Tour event weekend, we would be able to, at the time of recording this, it's Tuesday, we would have been able to open up U-Disc, see all of the U-Disc live stats popping up. We would have our Grip our grip 6 picks in, uh, and we'd be able to see everything going on. As of right now, if you were to try and go find like anything like that, information for the live scoring event, not convenient at all. I get, Reed can run you through it because he just figured out how to do it. Um, but is this a W or an L for disc golf? What do you think, Reed? I mean, I think it's a pretty substantial L to start off with. I mean, long term, maybe we can build something similar. But U Disc was the best looking, like the most polished thing disc golf had. Like everything else is janky. PDGA's website looks like it's from the <laughs> 1980s, and disc golf <laughs> disc golf network is still running on 480p most of the time. So it's like U Disc <laughs> at least just always looks so clean and it had a huge That's user true. base because it's what all the casuals have on their phone anyway. It was it was like the key to bringing casuals into the into the world of professional disc golf. So it feels like a huge L. But what makes matters worse is that, like what you said, right now I have to go to pdgalive.com and scroll down to the C tiers to find the All-Star event, which is there because it's an X C tier. It's listed under the C tiers, which is at the bottom of the page. And there it is. And the only information I can find is who's playing in it. So there's not any information about anything else. Now, granted, UDisk normally took a took a little bit of time to put up more information than just who was playing so 
to be fair, maybe they'll give us more uh, come come Wednesday or Thursday. But yeah, but I'm a little disappointed with it right now. And unless they announce something in the next couple of days that's like really cool, it's a it's a huge L. We we lost a lot. We're taking a huge step backwards losing you disc. Yeah, what do you think, Josiah? I think the biggest problem with it for long term for disc golf and the pro tour specifically is the fact that Reed pointed out that U Disc was designed for casual players to keep track of their scores and you could also look up the pro event in the same spot. And so I think that's basically just going to be the biggest problem is that you're now losing people because they're now having to go somewhere else and they may not want to. Um, now, granted, I know half the time I did it just like the U disc live didn't work in the app. It would just redirect you to a browser. Um, so it's similar to that regards where it's not actually that big of a deal for me to just look up a different website than it was before. Um, but honestly, I think that's kind of the biggest problem. Other than that, I think it's smart for the Pro Tour to put everything in the same place. I think it's smart for them to try and work on it. Yes, there's going to be a lot of bugs and issues in the short term um, because I've never seen the PDGA <laughs> specifically pull out anything quickly that's done well. It's kind of always felt rushed. The Pro Tour usually does a little bit better, so I'm a little uh, hopeful about this but i'll believe it when i see it type of deal but um like even right now they announced hey the disc golf pro tour is going to go doing their own scoring but if i go to the pro tour website right now at the top it says scores and i click on it and it takes me to udisclive.com if you're going to announce that you're going to put a whole (laughs) new scoring platform on your website big oof you can't have the old one still attached to your current website. <laughs> um, Days so before that's the kind season of where, starts. Oh, my gosh. Right, right. And so that's why I'm like – and the announcement came two weeks ago. They said that it's not going to come out until chess.com. Like, it's not going to happen for the All-Star Weekend. So I can understand that. But if you're going to yeah. announce something, that needs to be taken off your website first before you even announce it. Um, just that whole, like, hey, if we're – and it's not because, you know – there was some issue with UDISC. It's just for consistency and for congruency, like make sure that everything is on the table and you know what you're doing. So that's kind of where I'm just like, there's going to be a lot of short-term bugs, but I do like the idea of the pro tour, at least specifically putting all of their like live scoring on their same website. Cause at the end of the day, you want to drive people to the same website instead of saying, Hey, go to the PDGA for this, go to UDISC for yeah. this, go to the DGPT website for this. So I like the idea of putting it all on the pro tour website. Um, but yeah, you got to just put some more information and it has to be ready when you announce that you're doing that switch and not like, Hey, eventually we might do something like this. We'll tell you then. So that's, that's my opinion on it. I like it long term, but it just seems real rushed right now. I think I, yeah, I agree with both of you for sure. There's some upsides and downsides. I think short term, it's going to be an L. It's going to be a struggle for them. It feels to me almost like they were trying, I I don't know exactly. We saw the post from Udisc saying essentially that it was not something they necessarily wanted to do. They did not want to part ways. Um, But, you know, it is what it is. It's just hard to view read the situation and it seemed like they didn't try to come to some understanding and it couldn't work out i feel like this was a kind of rush decision and they maybe wanted to work something out and didn't i don't know why they didn't just acquire udisc or something like that um having a third party do the scoring seems like a not so great idea and so it makes sense for them to want to bring it in house but bringing it in-house before you already have a very polished product is weird (laughs) it is sketchy to say the least and i'm not excited about it like i i love the good hard-working people at the pro tour and the pdga but they do have a tendency to do stuff like this uh it's just like it's a new sport it's almost it's kind of a new organization and there's a lack of organization and i do not view that if 
that whatever comes out, whether it's an app or they just say, go to this website, it's going to be clean. It's going to be where everything's at. I'm very, very, very doubtful. I hope they prove me wrong. I am very, very doubtful that it is going to be clean, that it is going to be a satisfying UI. Uh, I think of the ESPN app. So that's technically third party. Like I don't, I'm sure there's an NBA app. I don't have the NBA app. I have the ESPN app. I can see all the scores. It's super clean. I can see articles. That's the other thing. Udisc has these scores. It has like the world rankings for Udisc. You can compare player to player, put them head to head. It's a really good app and it's polished and it's well made. And if you're going to bring it in house, you better have something equally polished and well made ready for me or else you're going to lose pe- like those casuals who are interested in the Pro Tour somewhat and maybe gaining traction with how interested they are because Grip 6 picks in disc, they're going to fall off. They're not going to follow you over, uh, potentially. I I hope that they do come out with something, and it's polished, and it's nice. It's an app. But I don't think having this third-party disc app was a bad idea. And I, I think it was kind of working. I think they should have essentially potentially acquired disc. Um, I don't know if that was an option. That's obviously way easier said than done. I say like you can just acquire things, but UDisc is a really good app, and all of its cohesiveness with the sport of disc golf, it's almost synonymous. Most disc golf courses you go to says, "Hey, download the UDisc app." You know, I do. I know the Pro Tour has an app. I think PDJ has an app for live scoring. I've never even used it. I've played a ton of tournaments too, never used it. We've we've done tournaments where PDJ live scoring is janky and messed up. I have a league where we do UDisc live scoring, and it usually works perfectly. That's my personal, very anecdotal experience, but I am very, very hesitant to put my faith in them putting out a good live scoring product this season. Yeah, I'll just say two so, things really briefly. Short-term L. Really, Go ahead. really briefly. <laughs> One is that as far as the acquisition goes, I think it was probably hard for UDisc to give a fair – uh, evaluation of themselves given how huge they are in the casual sphere yes yeah. so it would have been nice to see udisc somehow come up with a way to 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 fork off udisc live and sell it to dgpt because they don't need that to be huge they could have sold that to dgpt gotten a good chunk of change and then pursued their their casual audience like they're going to be forced to do anyway now so I really yeah. would have loved to see that, and that would have been great. They could have just reskinned it, honestly, and given it to the Pro Tour. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, it's disappointing to see that uh, that we're gonna lose UDisc like this. And as far as like the readiness of the sport for this, like you said, um, long term this is maybe a good move. But we weren't ready, and UDisc had a place while we were building for this. And we're so clearly not ready as a sport. Like, nothing is polished. Like, you cannot possibly convince me that it's going to look good when DGN doesn't look good. (laughs) Not even just the stream. Like, the website (laughs) doesn't look good. I'm serious. Like, you can't convince me that the best-looking website that DGPT has ever put out, DGN, is not even pretty. It's not good. It doesn't look right. Like, I'm, I'm pretty pessimistic, and I'd love to be proven wrong. But I think we were five years at least away from this being a good idea. <laughs> That's a, an apt, uh, apt observation there. I, 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 I would have said agree. one year. I would have said one year because I give it PD, two and a half. <laughs> PDG had just acquired Stat Mando, and so I think they're trying to do this in congruence with them and all of their stats. I think they just needed somebody to create a good user interface. Well, I guess we'll find out how well they did on that you know in two weeks but i think their whole idea was like oh hey we have stat mando now like we already have all the stats let's just work together and get something done now since they just acquired stat mando and i think they should have been like hey well like let's this year work on something and build it and then end it next year and do it next year. So Yeah, you want to hear another hot take? Them acquiring Statmando and including them in that press release was nothing more than, like, throwing some makeup on it. Like, they just wanted – they <laughs> they they were like, oop, we're losing disc. We better throw in that we're acquiring Statmando. I'm like, 
I, guys, I don't see how that matters. That's not the issue at hand, but okay. Like, Stat Mando does <laughs> not funny, keep cause... score, guys. They don't keep yeah. score. What is going on? Like, address the problem. You just threw in Stat Mando's name because people like them. They're like, oh, we need some good press. Throw in Stat Mando's name. Which is funny because they acquired them a while ago, but they're like, recently acquired Stat Mando. Exactly. Working exactly. With PDGA. That's what I'm saying. And it was I like Stat just a Mando, play. but I don't, I don't know what it really does for them. Stat Mando is cool, but it's like, I, I think don't know. they're, I think they wanted all of the stat, like Stat Mando's website on the PDGA website is what I think that they makes want long term. Is that you can go to the PDGA website and look up all these pro players and their stats. Yeah, Hunter made a good point on Griplocked. He said that what more than likely happened is that no money changed hands and the DGPT just hired those guys. Yep. <laughs> I be- I would believe that. I would believe it. Yep. I want to be very hopeful and optimistic and I do pray that they disappoint me and we get a really cool live scoring system that is nice and neat and works <laughs> at all. Uh but we've just we have had a little bit of a history of disappointment and I'm hoping they prove us wrong. But Me too, to yeah. be fair. I'm me too. for now, I'm sorry, little hesitant. But we'll, you know, we'll see. We could do a pickums on whether or not they're going to disappoint us or not. Uh, I know which way I'm going. We're going to end it. That's there. like that's like picking Kristen <laughs> Sitar. I don't know what you want to say there. That's true. Uh, oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you so much for listening to all of our listeners, uh, all of our YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you really want to support us, you can hit the join button down below and become a member and let us know what you think, guys. How, how are we feeling about the Disc Golf Network, all of these new things? Um, and yeah, we will see you next time. Kind of. Stay swanky. <laughs> Stay swanky. Stay swanky. <laughs>